These next shoes are disgusting. I don't really want to touch them with my hands right now. My name is Lee, welcome to my channel Kona Flipper. I'm a part-time UK reseller. I buy second-hand items at car boot sales and charity shops and I flip them online for a profit. Um, been to the car boot today and it is the last one of September for me. And to be honest, it might be the last one of the year. Um, we, Because of lockdown, everything's been put back and normally the, this would be definitely the last um, car boot for me. But because everything got put back, they're actually extending the season uh, for another month. So they are going to go through October, but the reality is the weather's not going to be great. Um, and I'm pretty much up to capacity with what I can store at the minute. So I might pop along for fun, but I, I won't be um, pushing heavy on the sourcing. Um, but today I've done quite well. I've picked up some random bits and pieces as usual. So um, I guess I should take you through them. So I don't normally pick up um, much in the way of furniture because it tends to be a bit bulky for me to store. But the reality is if the deal is good enough, I'm going to pick it up. And um, I picked up these um, this little nest of tables today. Um, I know nest of tables can go quite well and I've seen George Ross will often sell them. And he's always got a, a favourite, which has been uh, G-Plan. And this is a G-Plan nest of tables. Now, I was a little bit disappointed at first with it being a tiled finish because uh, it, it, as far as I understand the ones with the standard wooden top on all, all three um, will go for a higher um, sale price but I'm still quite pleasantly surprised at how much these can go for. Um, I picked these up, uh, they wanted 25, basically it was um, a couple of ladies who've, who've got some new uh, huskies and she was saying that um, she didn't want them chewing on and ruining the, the legs because she knew it was going to happen so she'd rather sell them onto a, a good home um, than, than have them destroyed by her new dogs so she, she wanted 25 off the 20 and, and she was happy with that um, I'd had a quick look because I didn't pick them up initially I looked at them saw them walked off had a little think about it and it looks like the, the tile top ones they they go anywhere from sort of 65 to about 90 um, and I thought, well, that was that was worth the risk, obviously plus plus postage. Um, so at twenty pound into sixty plus pounds, it's it's worth the risk. It is kind of a bit bigger and bulkier than I would normally want, but the margins are good. Um, something I did look at afterwards was uh, not necessarily doing it through eBay. There's another company who, uh, well, obviously you've got Etsy as an option, but there's another company called uh, Vinteria or Vinterias. I can't remember one of those two. And they specialise in um, well vintage uh, vintage things, so usually furniture. And I had a look at the the comps for um, G Plan nests of tables. Similar things there are going for the one fifty to one ninety mark. So whilst I'm probably will have to give them a bigger cut of the the commission, or that their commission will be higher than uh, eBay. It, it seems that they're more trusted for um, furniture where eBay is sometimes, well, it's often seen as a Wild West. So I do need to have a, a look into that. And okay, if I need to give them a bigger slice of the pie, if I can get a bigger pie, then that makes sense to me. So yeah, I'd rather they took 20% of 160 than eBay taking 10% of 85. So um, I'll, I'll give it a go. If it doesn't work out and they haven't sold after a while, then I'll, I will maybe move it across to eBay, or maybe I'll cross list, have them both going. I haven't really thought about it too much, but yeah, nice little uh, nest of tables. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this this shape, I think these are um, Astro. I'd need to double check. And underneath, I don't know which one had it. Oh, there we go. One of these has got a G Plan logo. So there's a little red G Plan, red and gold G Plan sticker there. So um, I did take the first thing I did take that out, had a look. There is some scuff into the wood, but nothing that um, a little bit of um, sanding and varnishing won't fix. So yeah, it's not an instant flip, but it could be some really, really 
it could be some really, really good margins. So yes, I've got some work to do, but I could do really well out of these. So that was my uh, first pick up of the day. Right, in between uh, takes, I've, I've just had a sale and it is this. So um, I bought this earlier on in the year, uh, thinking it might have been a uranium glass and it isn't. So I picked up two pieces for £3.50, there was this and there was a looks like a dessert bowl, an Art Deco dessert bowl, and the, the Art Deco dessert bowl is uranium glass. I paid three fifty for the pair. Um, the uranium glass dessert bowl, I didn't realise it was part of a set, so actually, on its own, not really worth an awful lot. But I had listed this one for... It's, it's, um, I forget the name of the manufacturer now, but it, the design was called Wheat Sheaf. And this sort of frosted green glass came in, um, they did it in green, uh, clear, uh, blue and a lilac, I think. And, and I think they might have done like an amber coloured one. So I've just sold that. Uh, I had up for 13 um, but would accept offers and 3 50 postage. Um, and they sent me an offer, I counted it, and we've settled on £11.50 plus the postage. So for £1.75 out into, yeah, over a tenner, I'm quite happy with that. It's not sort. Of, I, it's not the margins I would normally go for, but it's a decent margin. Um, it is breakable, which does worry me a little bit. But I bought it because I wanted to learn more about glass, and it forced me into to doing a bit more research and, and learning, basically. So I can now spot uranium glass, and I, I can now see by eye that wouldn't be uranium glass and I know what the other one looks like. I've also got a UV torch so I can spot it out in the field. Um, but yeah, that's literally just sold a few moments ago. So um, really happy that's gone. Um, shame because I'm now have to fill the gap with something else. But um, yeah, it's all right. It means that I've basically got timeshare on ornaments. Um, what else? So what is in the box? A couple of things. Got some watches which I'll go through in a moment. And I've got something that's way, 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 way out of my comfort zone. Um, I, I tend to pick up things where I can see there's um, like an inherent value of, like, with, with regards to shoes and clothing, I, I'm, I can pick stuff up, even if I don't know the brand, I can see if something's made of a quality material or, or it's, um, call it manufacturer, etc., etc. So I can see, even if I don't know an awful lot about it, that's got to be worth something. Where I struggle a bit is things like these, um, the trading cards, so your Pokemon cards, uh, and these are Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What do I know about Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Nothing. A little bit. I, like, a tiny bit. And um, I think it's because I've been watching more and more of the some of the other resellers, um, uh, such as uh, Master of Pieces, also James Collects and uh, Vinny. Um, so one of the things that, that I've noticed is that the, the trading cards can be worth an absolute fortune or they can be worth basically nothing. But when you get in a big pack like this where they're every single one is in a little sleeve to protect it, Someone's obviously taken care to, to put these together. Um, I, I saw the cards, picked them up before anyone else did, and basically started to, to flick through. And the lady said, oh, these, these are my sons. Um, we'd, we'd like £25 for the lot. And I've got no idea if that's a, a good value or a bad value. I, I didn't know what cards they were. I, it was only when I looked at them and, and thought, right, okay, these are Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I don't know the value of anything. And she said, I think there are some shiny ones in there. My son, um, he's um, autistic and everything, he, he likes to keep well ordered. So as soon as he buys anything, he'll, he'll put them in the little sleeves to protect them. So again, you, you don't know whether someone's telling you the truth or, or trying to spin you a yarn to make you pay over the odds. So even now, I don't know if I've overpaid for these, but my, my gut instinct was that there's a lot of cards here and they have clearly been well looked after. I had a flip through, I could see some were shiny, really didn't know. Um, and I basically 
said, would you take 20, which she was fine with. So I basically bought this big wodge. Now, I haven't even counted them properly yet. I, I counted 20, worked out how thick 20 were, and then multiplied that up by the, the stack. So there's about approximately 340 cards here. So I've paid £20 for 340 cards. I've had a flick through and um, you've got, there's an app you can get on your phone which you can scan the cards and it will give you a, a, an approximate value. That, that seemed to be a little bit glitchy. Um, so I've had a look at a, a watch that thick just to get an idea. The majority of them, it seems, on eBay are going for a, a pound including postage, so not, not brilliant. But I did find one in, in that first watch uh, that looks like it's worth about eight quid. So it, it could be the rest are completely worthless, or I might find another few in there that are worth eight quid. I would hope that at, at worst, I will get my money back and I would have learnt about something I know nothing about. But some of these cars can be worth an absolute fortune. And that's going to be down to condition and rarity. The good thing that I've got here is the condition because they have, every single one is in this um, sleeve from new. So every single one of them looks immaculate from the ones that I've looked at. But the rarity side of it, I don't know. So um, I'll bring them up so you can have a look and see, see the randomness. I, I, I know nothing, but let's have a quick look. I basically sorted them into colours. So really don't know an awful lot about these, but every single card is in one of these little sleeves. Some are shiny, some are not, but I don't know about them. Now, I did bump into James Collects at the car boot, and he's explained that there's a little code here, and if you can see that little code up here, which will help me identify it, and then I can use that to, to work out the, um, the value. And he said there are ones that have got shiny writing, ones that have got shiny pictures, certain ones will have gold, some are silver. Um, so there's a lot for me to look into and learn. So um, with 340 odd cards, I've, I've got a bit to go through. Um, but I'm gonna take my time with this. It's not, not the end of the world. What I'll do, if, once I find that one that's, um, that's worth uh, about eight quid, I'll flog that on straight away try and get some of my money back. Once I've I've found the few of the more valuable ones, get rid of those, and then I'll probably do bundles for the rest. But even if they're not worth an awful lot, at a pound each, I, what I don't want to do is have them sitting there, tying up my shop at, at, at like 340 items or whatever. So I'll probably work out um, some sort of bundles. I don't know how I'll work out the bundles yet, but whether it's in um, packs of 10 or packs of 20, a couple of quid including postage because th they'll go in a, a board backed envelope um it'll be dirt cheap to send them out so even if i'm getting a fiver for for 20 cards i'll do all right out of that if there's 340 cards so um yeah I'll, I'll pick i'll cherry pick the good ones individually sell them and then i'll i'll bulk clear the rest um so we shall see i i don't know an awful lot i, I could have a fortune on my hands i could have a pittance so we shall see now i I sometimes pick up watches at car boot sales and I, I like my watches, I collect watches, I like I like having a watch, uh, I don't have the money to go and get big fancy pants watches but I, I like watches so I buy them ones that I think are aesthetically pleasing. Um, no one needs a watch anymore, we have, uh, you've got your time on the corner of your screen and on your laptop or your computer, you've got it on your phone all the time, the reality is no one needs a watch now. I like a watch. So I, I have um, an active interest in watches, so hor horology, whatever. Um, so that helps with the fact that I know certain brands and certain things that are gonna, that are worth more than others. Now, I've got a couple of um, limited edition uh, Seiko watches that I bought because uh, they were in movies. Um, I can show you one in a second. Uh, so the the James Cameron film Aliens. Uh, there's one that um, Sigourney Weaver wore, uh, and it's known as the Ripley. So the original one of those from the from the eighties is is quite expensive, and then they did a limited release of three thousand of them 
a couple of years ago and I managed to pick up one second hand um, and whilst I was it's only, it's only a seat guy it's a, it's, it's a good quality watch but it's not one of these fancy pants Swiss ones it sparked my interest in research so I know a little bit about Seikos now. There was a guy who had a big tray of watches and more often than not, when you're going through the watches, they it's just a bunch of unnamed tut, something that, that's essentially worthless. There's, there's no proper brand behind it. And he was selling them at 50 p each piling through them. I was trying to do it in some sort of order to see if there's anything good. I managed to come up with three good ones. Uh, so I paid 50 pence each. So really happy with that. And I picked up a Seiko GS. So nice blue face. Got your day and date on it. Not GS, sorry. Uh, Seiko SQ. Original Seiko band. Now, that's from the early 80s. In reasonable working condition, this goes for between 50 and 80 pounds used. So even if it isn't working, my 50 pence is safe. So really happy with that. I can clean it up. The, the glass is, well, it's perspex. It's uh, quite scratched up, basically. But I've got... Um, I've got a, in my, my workshop, I've got a grinder, but it's got a polishing wheel on it. And I've got polishing compound for plastic. So I'll try polishing it up first. If I can make that look good, which I, I should be able to, that's great. If not, you can get replacement glasses. Or do I just sell it on quite quickly and easily? I've got um, a whole watch repair kit. As I said, I, I, I like watches. I've got quite a few of them. So it made sense to get the kit to change all the batteries myself, buy all the batteries in bulk. Once I'd bought all that gear, it meant that after I'd changed the batteries on three of my watches, it was all free. Much cheaper than going to the, to the guy in the market. So I need to get the, the batteries changed on all these. But um, yeah, that's potentially 50p into somewhere between 50 and 80. Even if it isn't working once I've changed the batteries, that's going to be 20 quid. So really happy with that. I'll show you the other Seiko, my, my personal one. So this is, um, this is the re-release of the, um, the one that um, Sigourney Weaver wore in, in Aliens. So it's got this huge, um, that actually, you can undo that with um, hex bolts. It's got hex bolts in there, so Alan Key can take that off and it's just a round watch, but I just love it because it's really brutalist looking and something different. Um, but if you ever see one of these out in the wild, these are worth an awful lot. Um, the re-release one, so this is the re-release one, uh, you're looking at somewhere around the £1,000 mark now. I didn't pay that when I bought this. I, I got it cheaper because there's a big big ass scratch on the um, on the glass which I've polished out. Um, original ones uh, do differ slightly from this. These ones have got the bolts here. There are, I think the crown's on the other side on the original one. But um, yeah, if you ever see anything like that, they can be worth anywhere up to a thousand pounds. So, um, but that's mainly in this sort of gunmetal color. Any other color, you, they, they re-release them in black and other different um, variations, and they're only worth about 300 quid. But in the gunmetal, anywhere up to a thousand pounds. So next one is a Casio. Um, Casio are quite well known for their G-Shock um, watches. G-Shocks, uh, basically the, the management at Casio wanted a, a thoroughly um, robust watch. And one of the things that they, they specified about G-Shocks is that they needed to be able to drop them off of their, their office, needed to be able to hit the pavement and still work. So they, they made them incredibly over-engineered for anything that anyone's gonna go through on a normal day. They do a smaller version for, for ladies and for kids, and it's called the Baby G. So brand new Baby G, you can pick them up on Amazon for about 60, 70 quid. I think they're a bit closer to 100 if you're in like your, your proper retail store, but Baby G's a good little watch. Um, none of these seem to be working at the car boot, so I, I couldn't tell. It could be that it's gonna cost me a quid or two on batteries, 
or it could be that I've bought a, a lump of plastic that I can't use. So um, a used Baby G, not massively valuable, but somewhere between 12 and 18 pounds usually. Lightweight, it's robust, shouldn't be an issue. Um, so yeah, little Baby G, 50p into somewhere around the, let's say 15 pound mark, so I'm quite happy with that. And then the last one, this is the oldest looking of them. This is an Oris, O-R-I-S. Oris watches are, are your higher end Swiss made watches. Uh, a basic Oris now, you, um, I'm sure if you go onto, um, onto, the, um, onto a jeweler's website, if you look for Oris, you're looking at about a thousand pounds starting for a watch. But I don't know what the old versions are worth. So I need to do some research on this. Now on the back, it does say, what does it say? Gold filled warranted 10 years. On the front it's got RS and it's Swiss made. Nice leather band, the leather's all cracked, but it's the original one, you've got the original brassware on it. And it's got a nice domed glass, which would be an absolute bugger to get replaced. So depending on how I clean up the uh, perspex on here, I will then decide whether I can be trusted with polishing that up with a polishing wheel. Um, and again, I don't know if this, I don't know if it works, I haven't tried winding it. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to open it up, have a look. Even if it's not working, an Oris watch, I, I did have a, they, they vary massively. Um, so it's going to vary on the, the, A, aesthetically does it look nice, B, is it original, C, is it working, condition, etc. So it, it could be anywhere from 20 quid to 100. I don't know. Um, so nice little project for me. If it doesn't work out, if none of these work out, I spent £1.50. It's, it's a project for me. It's a bit of fun. Um, hopefully... Well, whatever happens, I'll sell that one, working or not, that covers an awful lot. Well, I'll just bring the RS up so you can have a look. So, that is your RS. You see at the bottom it says Swiss made. On the back you can't see the inscription. But um, you can see the, the leather necked there. But, and that's what I meant about the domed side. So it's quite an attractive, aesthetically, yeah, I think that looks lovely. Um, whether there's value there or not, I, I should think there would be, but I don't know. So um, yeah, I think I've done quite well there for £1.50 out. Jumpers. So there was a, a lady there who had a box and it said cashmere jumpers. And so obviously looking at my my previous hauls, I'm, I'm very heavily into buying clothing because there's good margins and if you know what you're looking for, you can do really, really well. Um, it was a really, really windy day. Uh, clothes racks were flying all over the place with the wind. Uh, these are big, big industrial clothes racks that the, um, the car boot rent to people um, and even they were blown over. So yeah, it wasn't, wasn't brilliant and I, I didn't see much in the way of clothing that was worth my time. But when I saw this lady who had uh, her box of, of cashmere cardigans for, um, it, said, it said on there from five pounds. And um, so yeah, we, we went through and had, I had a dig through. There was your, some of your, your standard sort of um, Marks and Spencers and that sort of stuff. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not gonna bother picking up stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with it. You can still make money on, on Marks and Spencers. But what I've, I try to stick to the higher, end brands because I can usually get a higher price for them. So I got three in the end. Uh, we settled on 18 pounds for three. I think that, that was a more expensive, she charged a little bit less. I think she wanted, we originally she wanted 20 for the three pairs, three, um, three jumpers and we settled on 18. So this is a short sleeve ladies Pringle cashmere jumper. I did spend some time looking for holes because that that is, yeah, if you get a hold of your, your kind of band jacks. So this is um, Pringle. Nice short sleeve. Um, reasonably uh, tight fit. 
uh, short sleeve cardi, uh, jumper, and yeah, 100% cashmere, made in Scotland. Little minor bit of debobbling, needs a little bit of uh, linting, but otherwise that is in beautiful condition. Um, whatever she's washed these in, it's a bit pongy, so I need to air these out a little bit. It 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 smells really strongly of. Um, it's it's not uh, it's not like a bad smell. It's like a clean washing smell, but whatever she's washed in, it's quite strong, and it, it, it I don't like the smell of it. So, but maybe that's just me. Maybe people like it. But that Pringle one, uh, Pringle cashmere, it's got to be twenty five. I'll probably put it up at 30 and see where we go. Um, I haven't really looked at comps, but I've I've sold lesser brands for more, so I wouldn't have thought I'd have too much prob problem um, getting 20, 25, well, 25 ish. Well, I'll probably take 20 on it in the end, but 25 is where I'm gonna hopefully end up. Now, this one, it's cream. And if these things are cream, you really, really want to check that there's um, no stains on it. So, Always difficult when you're in a windy, overcast day. I couldn't see any stains, couldn't see any holes. Randomly, there's a bit of sellotape on it, which I haven't noticed, so I can go in the bin. Uh, again, 100% cashmere. Where's the label? Double check, a few. It is 100% cashmere, nice cream roll neck. So that should be standard autumn winter fare. Shouldn't have any problems with that. Now, this one, is a company called LL Bean. I think you see that there. LL Bean. So that is a company you may not have heard of. It's an American company, and they specialise in something called I think they're called duck boots. So it's basically uh, the whoever LL Bean was, he wanted boots to go out um, for for basically duck hunting, and it had to be something that was waterproof. It had to be sturdy for walking through sort of undulating ground and marshland and whatever, and it had to have a flexible foot so he could walk quietly. So it's, it's essentially, um, it's like a rubberized sole that's then bonded and sewn into a, a leather upper. Um, really, really popular, really cool looking boot. So if you just Google LL Bean duck boot, there are duck boots and then there are LL Bean duck boots. LL Bean ones are amazing. Uh, and if you want to get a duck boot, that's the way to go. So I knew instantly this is a quality item. Um, so uh, comps wise, I literally have no idea, but because it's a good brand uh, and I'll probably list it as LL Bean and I'll put in LL Bean duck boot, cashmere cardigan, uh, uh, jumper. Um, so hopefully people who are looking for the duck boots might see this and will also um, take a pump. Duck boots are expensive. Uh, they even like Sorrels, another company do duck boots and they're like 120 quid. So I think LL Bean ones are closer to 160. Um, have a look, I'm not, I'm not that sure, but they're, you know, over 150 pounds, I'm pretty sure. So if, if their shoes are that much, then I should be able to command similar price to the Pringle. I wouldn't have thought I'd have too much problems getting anywhere between 20, 25, but I'll pitch it higher and see where we go. Don't mind it sitting there a little bit, but that is a nice, Nice jumper. And I, I have paid up for these. Um, at car boots, I, I typically try and keep my, obviously you always try and keep your costs as low as you can. But when when she said 18 for the three, so you're looking at six pounds each, I think, would I pay six pounds in a charity shop for a Pringle or an LL Bean? I'd still make decent margin on it. So yeah, okay, I'm in a field, but I've never seen, I, I've never picked up an LL Bean in a charity shop and the opportunity is there. So more than I would typically want to pay at a car boot, but the reality is it's the same as or less than I would pay in a charity shop. So it's still worth picking up. Last one. This is the one that I'm really pleased with. Um, so this cardigan, Ooh, I think these are real horn buttons. Yeah, these look like a real horn. So this, it's going to need a wash and reshaping because you can see there's a bit of stretch on the buttons where it's shrunk. So it'll need a, a, a wash and to and then drying flat so it doesn't um, have the stretch on it. But this is Joseph. 
and Joseph, it, I've, I've mentioned before, Joseph is an uh, excellent brand. So, um, those ones, if I'm getting somewhere between 20 and 25 each, I think this has got to be 40 pounds upwards. Um, it's a little bit plain, but it's a nice cardigan. Things like the, the horn buttons will make a difference. Um, it does, I'm just gonna have to check to see if I've made a mistake in there. Hand loomed in Scotland as well. So yeah, I think I shall do do quite well out of these three. So need to get this one uh, rewashed so I can uh, dry it properly without the stretch. But um, yeah, quite happy with that. More than I'd normally pay, but there is decent margin to be made. So don't worry about paying up for the right items. You can make the money back it is still worth doing. So um, that is it for clothing, but I have got some shoe pickups which I'll show you next. So, uh, right, shoes it is. So I thought we were onto shoes, but I'd forgotten about this. Oh, that is a Bieber uh, ladies purse. I'll bring it up so you can see the detail. There you go, so that is Bieber. Really nice logo on there. You've also got it repeated on that. It's, a, it's not in brilliant condition, but I think they wanted four pounds. I started to walk away and they, they said, do you want it for a pound? I was like, okay. Um, Bieber stuff's nice. You, you, it's, it's high quality stuff. It's British. It's, uh, I'm sure it's from the, the 60s um, when Bieber came out. So you can have a look. It's definitely worth researching. Um, I've sold a Bieber, decent size sort of, I think it was like Gladstone style, handbag, big, big handbag. I bought that 25 at the car boot and I sold that for 85. This isn't as a, in as good condition. Um, this has been used, this, this, it's clearly been used. Um, for a pound, I still should be able to get somewhere around the 15 to 18 pound mark. If this was in good condition, I'd be pushing for 25. They do have more, um, statement type purses which you would get closer to 50 or maybe over 50 but that for a pound you, you can't go wrong it, it's an investment that that literally you, you can't lose with that it's it's a nice little purse so that's good um shoes wise um bit of a mixed bag today so these are nothing fancy i think these were clark's on me yeah clark's um very minimal heel wear uh, so they are used, but not an awful lot. No staining on the suede. Um, I tend to not shy away after there's dirt on the suede. However, it depends on the uh, manufacturer of the shoe. If these had stains on being Clarks, I wouldn't be able to get as much as say, for example, um, a higher end shoe like a Timberland or a, a Ugg Boots. So I'm more willing to buy higher end suede shoes that have got stains on. If they're lower end ones, it's just not worth my time to fix them up. These were three pounds. I should be able to sell these for around 20 plus. So um, in good condition, coming up for winter, nice decent block heel on it, attractive looking shoe with uh, a, a shearling top. That that should be an easy 20 quid. I'll, I'll, ideally, you know, I want 25 on that, but no problem taking uh, 20 on those, so that's good. Um, I picked up these. Uh, these are Timberland. They're kind of like a pink colour, and they are discoloured. So these will need a clean up. They're, they're not in brilliant condition. But I, I, I tend to... I tend to not buy cat boots, caterpillar boots, but I will get Timberlands. Cats seem to, like, at the top around the, there's like a padded bit around your ankle, and that tends to disintegrate because it's not real leather, where with Timberland it usually it, it is real leather. Um, these I only paid three pounds for. Um, so even though I, I don't know if I'm gonna, new buck is a bit of a sod to clean. Um, it's harder than suede. So I'll have to see. I, I may be able to get these looking Fantastic, but I don't know. But at three pound outlay, it was worth the go. Uh, wrong, roll top Tims, I should be able to get around the 30 pound mark um, once I've got them looking sparkly. So um, yeah, somewhere between 25 and 30, depending on how clean I can get those. So uh, a sound investment. Um, yeah, happy with that. 
Uh, what else have I got? Some dirty New Balance 373s. New Balance sell very, very quickly. Uh, I paid up more than I normally would. I tend to try and keep ladies trainers to the, my outlay price at five pounds or less. But because I'm often getting them under five pounds, it doesn't matter if I then on occasion spend over five pounds. So I paid six for these, uh, got the pair, always did the bend test to make sure that the they, um, rubber's in good condition. The only issue you sometimes get with New Balance is where the EVA midsole meets the rubber actual sole. Sometimes it can come apart. So always check around the toe box, sorry, the, where the, at the toe end, to see if there's any indication that the rubber's coming away. Always, always check inside the heel for wear, because once that's worn out and you've gone through the, the material, essentially worthless. I saw another pair which I picked up, was just about to spend a five on them. They looked in good, clean condition. Just as I was about to hand over my money, I noticed that it worn through, so I put them down again. Um, so, yeah, New Balance, I'll pay up to six quid. I might even pay seven, depending on the, on the shoe. Uh, football boots, done all right today. So, we've got these and these. So, first ones I saw were these. All the, this uh, lady had lots and lots of shoes, all very, very dark colors, uh, lots of Nikes, and looking at the condition, some of them were in bad shape. Some of them, I wondered if they were in bad shape because they were fake, and I just didn't want to take the risk uh, because I've been caught out on um, counterfeit Nikes um, and it's painful when you get caught out. So, um, I'm usually pretty good at telling, but some of them are, are, when they're dirty, it's much, much harder to tell if they're, they're fake or not. If they're clean, it's a lot easier. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been caught out on that the hard way. Now, these, I've sold very, very similar ones to these. Um, these are Nike Tempo Legends. I've sold Legend Pros before for 85 quid. These ones I think are the Legend Academy, which is the, the within the, the Legend, Tempo Legend range, the, the higher end ones going down to your lower end ones. So there's Pro, Elite, and Academy. These are Academy. Um, and they're also a small size. These are, what are these? Uh, UK7, that's probably all right actually. Whereas I got a lot, lot more for the, the higher end ones, I would have thought I should be able to get around the 40 pounds mark for these, 35, 40 pounds. The, the Academy ones are not as good as the Pro or Elite, but I should do okay. Only problem is I have no laces, so um, I have spare laces, I buy them in bulk. Would have been nice to get them with laces, but I haven't got them. So um, yeah, the, the higher end tempos you can get 70 plus four, and I, I've got 85 for a pair. Um, but being the academy and being a slightly smaller shoe, I think it might, it might be somewhere around the 35 40. Uh, these ones are Nike Legend, something else. I forget exactly which one. In fact, I've got in my little book to the right down. Apparently they're Nike Air Legend. So these are Zoom Air Legends, and these ones have got um, removable studs. So if they are, when you're listing shoes, if they've got molded studs, they're for firm ground. So you often put in, the, in your title FG for firm ground. With ones that have got removable studs, you'd, type, you'd add um, SG for soft ground and that helps people figure out where they want the firm ground or the soft ground shoes. Um, something I have noticed, which I didn't earlier, two of these studs are not the original. It's not the end of the world. Um, it, ideally, you want them all matching. These are a nice, soft leather. These have got something called fly knit at the back, but these are a nice, soft leather. These look disgusting right now. These are foul, but with some cleaning, I will have these looking like new again. So once these are done, I should be able to get somewhere in the region of 40 to 60 pounds, I would have thought. There is some work, there's a little bit of gluing needed at the back where the leather start to come away from the heel piece. The sole, um, the insoles need re-gluing down. But once I've worked on these, I will have these looking like new. So I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do a video on, um, on cleaning up football boots. But um, 
yeah, so these were three pounds each, um, 35, somewhere between 40 and 60, depending on, on um, which way the wind blows. Oh, I'll, I'll hang on for the higher end. Let's see where we go. So yeah, good little pickup set. I'm sure we've all heard the saying, where there's muck, there's money. Um, these next shoes are disgusting. I don't really want to touch them with my hands right now. Um, I mean, these have been let get damp. So you've got damp. They're dry now. These are Timberland. But they're minging. I will get these looking near as damp new. Um, the soles are in good nick. Uh, but they have been let get damp. Once I've cleaned these up with saddle soap, uh, so I'll, I'll clean them first with um, Angelus Easy Clean. I'll then clean them with saddle soap to rehydrate the leather, take out all the laces, um, to clean them up properly, let them dry properly. Then I'll um, nourish them with um, shoe cream. There's a difference, there's shoe cream, there's shoe polish. Cream will help recolor because it's got more pigment in it, or recolor them to make them look nice and, and have that depth of color, and then polish afterwards to, to bring the shine through to make them look good. These, give me 20 minutes. I won't do it in one go. 20 minutes, half an hour. I'll have these looking fantastic, and these will sell for around 35, 40 quid minimum. Um, I paid 50 pence. Basically, I got three pairs of shoes at 50 pence each, and it's because they've not been looked after. But if you have a good quality pair of shoes that um, haven't been looked after, you can rescue them. If you have a crap quality pair of shoes, bin them because this a, it's not worth it, and B, um, they they can't be rescued because of the the way they're constructed. They'll they'll often fall apart be, with because of the neglect. So next set, got a pair of these again. These are minging. These look in terrible state. The leather is so dry, it should not be that colour. That should be a nice, dark, rich brown. Now these are Russell and Bromley. And there's kind of like a, they've got the elasticated gusset, so these are like a, a Chelsea boot, but then they're, they're more like a, almost like a cowboy boot sort of style. So great, lo loads of wear left on the heels, proper decent stacked leather heel rather than the fake, where it's like a, um, leather that's glued on around the edge. This is all properly stacked leather. So Russell and Bromley shoes, really good brand to look out for. Once I've got these cleaned up, so again, this, this will not take a lot of time. I need to clean them, let them dry, then I'll have to clean them again, but using the saddle soap to clean and rehydrate, and that'll strip off any... Um, the first clean is to get away your debris. The second clean with saddle soap rehydrates, but it gets off ingrained dirt. It's gross. The recolouring with the, the cream will give them depth of colour and the shine gives them some oomph. So, these are gross, but that is going to be 50 pence. Within half an hour, that will be 60. I might even get 70 quid for them. And the last ones, in a little bit of a state, these are a pair of churches. Now, um, two shoes that I'm always looking out for are Grensons and churches. I've, I've got a great pair of Grensons myself, which I'd saved up for. Um, knew they should have been about 190 and I got them in the sale for 130. No, they were 260, reduced to 190 and I got them in the sale at 130. So Grensons are a good, good, British brand, churches are even better. So these aren't the biggest shoe in the world. They're a little smaller than I'd like, but at seven, that's basically the lowest I'd really want to go on a decent pair of shoes. Um, but being churches, these are going to be made to a much higher standard than most shoes. These have got a, um, the, the stitching on the sole, it's called a Blake stitch, and that means it can have a thin and a flexible sole for, for comfort and movement. Um, and these are called Oxfords because you've got the tongue, is, the, 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 the flaps where you have your uh, laces going into, 
they are sewn underneath the vamp. If you had the, the, the flaps on the top, say like a pair of, um, like these, again, I don't want to touch it with my hands, where the, these flaps where your laces go through are on the outside, sewn on top, these are called a Derby. If they're underneath, it's called an Oxford. And then if it's got the holes on the top, that's called broguing. So these, 50 pence, the heels are in good nick, the sole is in good shape, uh, with no flexibility. While sometimes you can see that it, there is wear, these are solid. You can push, there's no flexibility in there, so there's plenty of life left in those, even though you can see the, the stitching on the, the blade stitch underneath. Um, once I've got those cleaned and polished up, minimum 80 pounds, but I reckon I should be able to get over 100 for these once I've got them done. So there is a lot of creasing around the toe box, and it's because they've been let to, after wearing them, they haven't put a shoe tree in. You, you want a shoe tree to keep your shoe's shape and allow it to dry in the natural shape of a foot and that minimises your creases and it means that you get more longevity out of your shoe. I've, I've got pairs of shoes that I've looked after, I've had for nearly 20 years now and you pay for a good quality shoe and you look after it and it will last you a lifetime. So I, me personally, I don't mind paying up for a pair of shoes for myself because if I look after them and I get a good quality pair in the first time, that's it. I, I, my my grandson boots paid up a bit, but that's it. Those boots will last me the rest of my life. These churches, once I've got these looking good, I reckon I'll, I'll want to push for a hundred on these, um, and these will last the next person for as long as they look after them. They will hopefully get twenty years life out of these. So um, yeah, for for fifty pence per pair. Yes, they're disgusting. I will be, not only will I be wearing gloves when I'm cleaning these and a, and a full on apron, I'm gonna be wearing my face mask as well because I do not want the crud on these splashing up in my face, it's, they're gross. But where there is money, there's money. So this is 50 pence each, that should be 50 into 35, 40, 50p into 60 to 70, and 50p into 80 to 120, depending on where I go. So um, yeah, that is it today. Um, so this might be my last haul for a little while, um, but I've got other bits and pieces that I've recorded over the year that I haven't had a chance to put together. So I will put other bits and pieces together. I have no idea what this adds up to. I haven't spent an awful lot today and it could be worth a decent amount. So do the math yourself. Sorry, I've been a bit lazy, but think I've done all right. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, I'll be popping out new videos as and when I can. Um, I will be putting out a shoe cleaning video at some point. There is a lot of money in shoes as long as you know what you're doing. Yeah, you need to invest a little bit in kit, but the, the returns are good. Easy to post, easy to pack, pack and post, easy to store. It's just a bit of gross cleaning them, but that's all right. It's all about the money. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments feel free whack them in the comments please give me a thumbs up it really really helps if you haven't subscribed please do i'm nearly at that thousand so every sub helps so thank you very much and i shall see you next time